Today I'll be joined by actor, comedian, writer, Jermaine Fowler. You know him from films such as Sorry to Bother You, um, Coming to America 2, and shows like Crashing and Superior Donuts. But today we're here to talk about his hilarious new film, The Blackening. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, dude. You're a, a fellow, fellow Maryland guy like myself. I was wondering what clubs, uh, I'm actually from Baltimore, which is debatable um, if, you know, if we like succeeded from Maryland. <laughs> My God. <laughs> wow, I know you're from Maryland, first of all. Um, I'm from Hyattsville. I'm like 45 minutes away you're from You're not that far away. Not at all. Just down the down that highway. So I uh, I don't know. When I go to Baltimore, I feel like it's a mix of like Jersey, Philly, New York. Like there's so many like it's just I think that's why like Baltimore dudes and DC dudes got such a weird relationship. <laughs> it's a love hate relationship. I don't know what it's the love hate. Is. I have no <laughs> idea. But no, Baltimore is uh is just like breeded so much talent musically and uh actors film t like there's just so much talent down there man yeah, oh and there's me but who, who else no I'm just, uh, just <laughs> <fucking around. laughs> i remember when the, uh, the nerd song came out all the girls standing in the line uh -huh. in the bathroom like they they uh pharrell said he borrowed that sound from baltimore um Club house music, music. Yeah. yeah and i was yeah. like what so i think um i don't know as it, i don't know if it happened ever since you know more baltimore you know, mainstream uh, house music, but like, I love to hear more of that, man. It was yeah, no, we have this amazing talent of getting really, really close to being something special and then making sure it doesn't happen. And squandering? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good at it. Like, I'm mastering that shit right now in like, real time. When I was a kid, I went to the harbor and I was like, man, it was so beautiful when I was a kid seeing the harbor. Don't go now. I didn't. I, I, I do it. So uh, I, uh, I, I went back like as an adult and it was just garbage everywhere. I was like, what happened in the harbor? But as a kid, that's what happens to you all the time. You, you, you're a kid, everything is different and beautiful. When you get older, you're like, oh, that was like, oh, I didn't recognize half this stuff when I was a child. No, it used, Baltimore is to be. it used to be the spot. Did you do comedy clubs in Baltimore? Yeah. Or did you just, uh, or like, did you? Baltimore Comedy Factory when I was coming up. Absolutely. Um, but I, I performed all around, like, just that area, Columbia, Maryland, you know, um, all, all, all types of, you know, Maryland is just like, I just drove around doing shows. Was acting around. always a part of it? Because you, you could have played in Hawaii, right? I probably could have, actually. I uh, didn't know how to get into acting, so I chose to do stand-up as a way to get into that. And when I was in high school, I just I would just do improv after school, improv classes. Or I had a drama teacher named Mr. Spencer. He mm -hmm. really helped us get into uh, 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 the, the whole acting world and writing, too, writing our own material. But my teacher... Um, uh, well, it wasn't my teacher was Mr. Spencer, but the other drama teacher was named Mr. Gentry. He was on the wire, and that was like a oh, big word. deal. Yeah, who did he play? I don't remember. I don't remember. But I remember that was like his thing. He, I think he played a, a, a one of the um, homeless homeless dudes in the in the, in the show. Uh, anyway, Mr. Gentry was like a big deal when he had that that credit. We were like, yo, he came to school talking. Came to school talking this shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was like, y'all gonna listen to me today? I was on the wire. It's like, I am right, Mr. Gentry. <laughs> so, so congratulations on the film. The film is hilarious, um, and, um, and for me, it's also kind of scary too, right? Good. I, I hope so. I, you know, like I, you know, I was like jumping a little bit. Um, could you can you talk about how the how the film came about, dude? Well, first of all, I'm a horror movie fan, like fanatic okay. of horror movies. Okay. So the fact that it kind of creeped you out in some ways makes me very happy, because it did to me as well. So uh, the film came about. Um, it, it was, uh, the conception was from uh, Dwayne Perkins. Uh, he's uh, one of the co-writers of the film. He um, made a sketch years ago um, through his um, comedy sketch troupe um, called Three Pete. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a um, sketch based on what you just saw in the film. Right. Uh, Tracy Oliver saw the sketch and wanted to make it longer form. She wanted to write it as a film with him. And they did. So I read the script. Um, my manager sent it my way, and she said, they want you to play Clifton. And I read it, and I was like, wow, this dude's such a nerd. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and I, I, had, I had some reservations about it at first because of what he represented, and I was just like, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I felt like I just kind of wanted to add more to the Clifton was the funniest. Yeah. Clifton was the funniest dude, though. Oh, like, damn, thanks, man. I mean, it's the Walmart fit and the... Yeah, oh, and dude. I wanted now, to how'd you do the... Like, what's, what's, can, can you do the voice real quick? Can you do the yeah, I can do the voice, but I don't have the glasses. <laughs> I need your glasses. No, no. Um, he, he's just... Um, he, on, on paper, it, he was just a, a nerdy guy. And um, without ruining anything, you know, he definitely had a story behind, you know, 
his, his, you know, he had a POV behind his Absolutely. actions, of course. I'm not sure when his interview comes out, but I don't want to ruin anything. However, um, when I got the script, uh, I, I, I spoke to Tim about it, and Tim and I just clicked like that, and he wanted, um, he, he just trusted me with um, a lot of the things I wanted to bring. Um, the mannerisms, the... the <laughs> The way he spoke, right. the way he dressed, it was uh, it was definitely a process. And it's, it's a real POV because I mean, it's something to say about he's a black dude who wanna he wants to hang out with, with be black, accepted, with accepted, but he doesn't really fit. Like he doesn't, you know, he's probably he doesn't listen to Lil Dirk. <laughs> he can't what, hoop. But, but that's you know what yeah, I'm saying. But that's the well, thing. maybe he can hoop. That's, I don't the, know. That's, what I'm that's the thing. You probably would never know that about him because people don't give him a chance at all. Like by right. first glance you go, I can't hang out with that dude. You don't even know if he might like King Vaughn or you know, right, right, no one no right. one knows, you know, but cause he just <laughs> comes off as such a dweeb, you know what I'm saying? But also you wouldn't even know he voted for Trump if he didn't say he voted for Trump. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the thing about the film. You don't know who these characters are unless you really get to truly, you know, open yourself up to them. Yeah, black people yeah. voted for Trump is not always a secret unless they on Twitter. If See, they on Twitter, then they got that shit. That's like the issue with Twitter. Plastic across like, like their bio. I feel like I know too much about people because of social media. I don't even want to know that much about people. I yeah. hate social media for that reason. I had like, jelly for lunch. It's yeah, like, I, like so why do I need to know that? About? I, yeah. I didn't need to know that about you. Okay, <laughs> jelly and Trump. I, okay, cool, whatever. I don't care. Like, I just, oh man, people are so open to that. But uh, every character in the film kind of represents a, an insecurity. You know, I feel like every black person is inherently kind of insecure about something. And I feel like in the film it all comes out. Right. You know? But Clifton's the one that honestly was the, he, he let it get to his, his psyche a bit. So the film takes place in a cabin in like the middle of nowhere. Would you go to a cabin like that in real life? Yeah. Where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I mean, I, me and my lady, we go to uh, Arizona. When, the, actually, the creepiest place we went to was this, uh, we went to this uh, this Airbnb in uh, in Sedona, Arizona, and I don't know why Sedona it just looked beautiful, right. but at night it was so quiet. I'm used to kind of like some like a helicopter in LA, you know, helicopters are always floating, you know, above you or whatever, and traffic or whatever. But it was the quietest place I've ever been to, and I thought that night, you know, I was gonna die. I did, <laughs> but I'm open to it. I'm open to you know doing uh, stuff like that. But I'm I, missing something because I haven't yeah. like it hasn't resonated with me yet. Like I have a friend. Him and his girlfriend had rented a cabin in North Carolina, and he mm. has like a five minute video of a bear that was like hanging out in front of the door. And I'm like, yo, so y'all yeah. should come the next time. And I'm like, for what? To be a bear, bear snacks? <laughs> like, <laughs> is he gonna be there next time? Is he, does he know I'm coming? Should we tell the bear ahead of time? No, I, 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 I love animals, but there is a boundary. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you're also in their, you're in their territory, so you got to be understand, you know, you got to understand that is you are a guest in their home, honestly. So that bear knocking on the door is him going, hey, did you, you didn't check in, you know, you should probably check I'm in. Not, I'm not, that's what I'm saying, you know, I shouldn't be there. If you got to check in the place, then you probably shouldn't go, I feel like. I, I love nature. I'm a big nature. Give me some shrooms. I'm going outside. That's you gotta check in with there. nature. You yeah, gotta yeah, check yeah. in. I think yeah. you should. I think you should. That bear was just reminding you. Send me know. a postcard, man. I'm not coming out. <laughs> I respect like that too. There. But Baltimore got some. Uh, you know, it got nature out there, right? I mean, I got woods. We got. Woods I mean, it's and like trees there. growing in the middle of some of the houses. But that's it. Like I, I know. <laughs> that's the. I know what I'm gonna. The most I know nature. what I'm gonna get. Like I know <laughs> what I'm gonna get. I think the scary part, and it kind of like in relation to the film, is like. You know, these friends are getting together to have a good time, but there's so much unknown. It's like, yo, y'all could have did that what? at an Airbnb in like Oakland or some you shit. You could have, you, you definitely could have, but I truly feel like, you know, getting out of their comfort zone is very important. I feel like, uh, I always, I, I don't know, I think everyone should do a field trip, some, you know. Okay, so a, a lot of horror movies, because you're a horror movie guy, mm -hmm. a lot of horror movies start in a fucking cabin. <laughs> yo, at what point are we like, yo, probably. maybe we should kind change of rethink cabins. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the word cabin, <laughs> we change the word cabin to something else, you know. A cabin is, just, is, a, is inherently creepy, like it is a creepy word because of, you know, the implication. Like yeah. anything can happen in a cabin because of the, the horror movies, right? That's what I'm saying. But I don't know, it's the atmosphere, like, you know, wood creeks, uh, you're, you're secluded from everything. It's the perfect place to murder a bunch of people. Yeah, there's, there's so many hilarious people in the film. Um, Jay Farrell's in there, you're my origin Yvonne, yourself. I wanna know. X, yeah. I wanna know how did you get how did you guys get any work done? Well, we we don't <laughs> we didn't. Like, it was it was really hard to, you know, stay focused on set. 
Uh, in fact, there were, you know, the cast is so big. We would be on set just laughing the entire time that we forget they would say action. And we're still talking, joking around, doing bits or whatever. So our set word was, um, <laughs> say, lacuti. <laughs> and that meant shut up, we gotta work. So anytime like the AD would be like, action, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be like, Fela Kuti, Fela Kuti. He'd be like, oh, Fela Kuti, Fela Kuti. So then, you know, we get back to work. But it was, it, it, we love each other, man. It was a great cast and everyone was just like happy to be there. We shot it during the pandemic, so oh, we wow. just happy to be out the house and just be around other people. So you yeah. had like one of those shut down sets. Mm -hmm. Nobody could go anywhere, so you really it, had to stay in the cabin. Yeah, we had, <laughs> everyone had masks on. You had to abide by the mask rules and all that good stuff. It was creepy as hell, man. It, we shot it during the apocalypse, like it was wild. So you said you are a horror, you're a horror movie guy. I mm -hmm. wonder what is some of your, your favorite horror movies of all time. Um, Ooh. Yeah, um, Sleepy Hollow is number one. I watch that almost every day. I don't know what it is about that movie. It is atmospheric as hell and it's just kind of, you know, I love horror movies set during like a Victorian period. Uh -huh. It's just like the juxtaposition of the blood and the, the, the outfits and the, the music, the score is gorgeous. Like that's a that's my favorite movie. Honestly, it's my favorite movie in general. Uh, Sleepy Hollow. You're one of the people who are like run, run, run. I you know it's funny when I go see a movie. Um, I'm very cerebral. I'm I'm watching it. Like I don't yeah. even like when people talk during the movies. I just want to watch it and, enjoy, and digest it. I don't even. I say nothing. You know, I'm always up here. Second time I watch a movie, it gets more. That's why going to a movie on a date is a terrible idea. I want to go by myself. Is anybody it's else going, going to the movies by, movie by yourself? It's like anybody? way better for Thank me. Thank you so much. I bought. I, it's me in the movie, not me, you in the movie. Like, I want to watch this for me. You know what I'm saying? I have a wife so. and a child, and like <laughs> I see you every day. I, yeah, I yeah. Kinda, Why would I want to bring you to the you movie? Know, <laughs> this is work. It's work. I miss, <laughs> if I miss something, and then you expect me to know something about the film, and like my daughter was gnawing on the side of my boot, Man. and my wife was saying that uh, Yvonne Orji's shirt is cute. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. like missing. You taking me out of this? Yeah, are you taking me out. I don't of like it? People be like, "Hey, man, what's happening next?" I'm like, "We seen this at the same time. Like, we just, we're, I'm, what are you fucking, what are you talking about?" So I'm sorry, Craig. Can I curse? I don't know. Yeah. Man. All right, good. Yeah. Is it going on TV? Like, I think like 15 times. All right, good, 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 yeah. good. All right, all right. Not uh, Sleepy Hollow is one. Um, I would say uh, the original Halloween, um, John Carpenter's Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis is the best horror movie ever made. Um, I would say I saw The Exorcist for the first time during the pandemic. Because yeah. I was a kid, I would hear the legend of how scary this movie was. It wasn't was. hitting, probably. Well, because it's so old. Like Basket Case. Remember Basket Case? Basket Case was so scary as fuck. So it was like yeah. a little monster inside of a basket, and they would open a basket up, and the motherfucker would jump out and like bite you. Like when I was a kid, that it was funny. The, yo, it was the scary. Yo, it was the scariest shit as an that's adult. Scary. I'm like, that's not scary to me. Yo, <laughs> Wait, okay, so listen, I'm not afraid of slashers. Don't scare me. It's right. really the unknown that scares me, right? Like, uh, so Exorcist creeped me out because the whole religious horror stuff really does creep me out. Right. But it's it's movies like Final Destination, which is on my list too. That scares the shit out of me. Yeah. Right? Final Destination, like the fact that. Yo, the way they be dying is just fucked That's what up, I'm saying. Right? Like, you, I, after I, fought, I saw the first one, I couldn't just like walk around normally. Like, I had to like look over my shoulder and like, you know, I was afraid to just exist because of that movie. That movie scared the hell out of me because there was no killer. You couldn't see it. You couldn't feel it. It just, you yeah, know what I mean? It's like a, 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 a log from a back of yeah. a truck, like crush somebody's head. Everyone talks like... about that scene in the second <laughs> Final Destination, that log scene. I, yeah. I think every road was closed after that movie came out because, Yo, like, because what? <laughs> one the chain broke, and I was like, "All right, chain broke." But then the log, <laughs> like, I it, it, and the log just shoved its way through the windshield. And the the, the funniest part about that scene is the officer. He, he dropped his coffee and he looks up to the log and he goes, "Ooh, <laughs> that's the funniest part of the movie." Yo, it's just the reaction. I'm if, like, "That's the, his last face it, was that." If you grow up mm -hmm. and like. A fucked up neighborhood and like somebody's shooting or something mm -hmm. and it like the bullet doesn't hit you mm -hmm. you kind of feel like final destination like that is like the you know it's like you know what i'm saying because death. now it's like i dodged death. Dodge death yo now a tree trunk is gonna you know Dude, like you know something's funny you say that because i'm sure a lot of people have never been on a plane before and the first one you know the plane explodes and stuff so that probably wasn't relatable to a lot of people but if you're in the hood and you dodge a bullet Yo, that's your final destination. Yo, that's like, it. They should do a black final destination. Oh, <laughs> that nah, should be the next yeah. sequel. That's the sequel. It's just, right, <laughs> just right. reality from like, <laughs> from Trenton, New Jersey. That's where it takes place. Maybe Camden. I don't know. Uh, Baltimore. Maybe Baltimore. But, hey, man. Come, hey, we, we got a crew. Um, so with the success of movies like Get Out mm -hmm. and like Us, um, 
and now we have the blackening. Uh, we it feels like we're in the renaissance of the black horror film. It's like the black horror film mm -hmm. civil rights movement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you two can die. You know, you two yeah, can make hey, you two can, can make it yeah, to the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, you two can yeah. make it. We to can the make end. it to the end. We're gonna make it. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna make it to the end. Yeah. But no, you're right. I, I feel like um, when I first did Sorry to Bother You, me, Tessa, and Lakeith and Steven, and you know, we were all just kind of vibing. Um, just about the fact that we aren't in a lot of the films that we love. Okay. You know, wow. uh, we were talking about Eternal Sunshine as Father's Mind. And it was like, we love that movie. No niggas in it. And a bunch of movies that I love. You know what I mean? A bunch of ones I named. You know what I'm saying? And then the fact that like they're giving, you know, filmmakers like Boots and, and, and Jordan and, and uh, uh, film, you know, Tim, Dwayne and Tracy, like they're, they're building and paving their own way. You know, they, they, they've built their own lane. And I think that's, it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful that I can see myself in films like that now. And my daughter can see me in the films that I, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, really, it's really nice, man. So it also gives you um, the confidence to just create, like, outside of what we're always kind of taught to create. We can dream in a different way now. Yeah, I mean, the confidence is always there. It just took time, you know what I'm saying? Right. It took time. I think uh, Get Out, really, it's still... Come on, you know what I'm saying? Right. The movies, we can talk about the movie all day. That movie just really is one of the goats. Yeah, you know nice. No, Not just for what the movie is, because the movie, it, you can watch the movie so many times and pick up different things from it, but what it built out, you know, from the, the careers it built out. Like Friday, right? You watch Friday right. and you see what that movie is. It's a great film. Right. Greatest indie movie ever made to me is Friday, ever, ever made. And you look at that movie's success and the careers it built out. Like the cast, it, 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 it opened the world. Like, Bernie Mac, Chris. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Willis Boone, like everybody, man. I, I, I see this movie, The Black and It being the same, you know, doing the every, same thing. Every Friday, every Friday kind of introduced us so, to like I, Mike, Mike, Mike Epps, Epps uh, Cat, Cat Williams. Uh, even Terry yeah. Crews. I do Terry Crews from uh, the, right. that, that Gladiator show from way back in the day on UPN. But no, Friday. But then Friday, Friday, Friday the next, I was you like, you know more from Terry Friday. Cruz. Yeah. Dude, it's an introduction. I, I, I don't know. When I, I, I knew of everybody in our cast individually, but the fact that I got to work with them on one project, man. Everyone is so perfect in the film and played their position so perfectly, and it just built such a great movie. Absolutely. It was, it was, it was great, and I can't wait for people to see it. Won't you um, tell everybody what's next for you? Oh, for me? Oh, uh, uh, man. Um, it's a bunch of stuff. I always kind of like to keep it under wraps. Okay. Because, uh, you know, I feel like, the, uh, we, we don't come from, uh, I don't know, people don't want surprises anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to know everything right now, and uh, I'm a big fan of just, you know, keeping everything kind of like, you know, tucked away. You until pop up in a new out. color purple, we're gonna yeah. be like, oh shit, he yeah, didn't tell us. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I'm a fan of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right.